Welcome to this edition of Taking Off. Christy Wong finally flies in Lola, so you get some high wing action for the first time. For the first time. <laughs> no, not really, but on this edition of Taking Off. So uh, on this flight, uh, we've got uh, some um, innocent bystanders in the back there. We've got our controller extraordinaire, Matt Wells, and we've got Eric Johnson from Eric Johnson Photography. We need somebody to tell us what to do and where to go. Yeah. Go around. Yeah, he'll tell us Wait, where to go. All right. I'm the what to do with the CFI. He's the where to go. Yeah. We have a little bit of everything in here. We do. It's a very experienced uh, uh, cabin today. Kevin, can, can, we have somebody uh, take pictures of us. Eric can take pictures of me telling you what to do for your student. Oh, very go. good. Where to go so that I could tell him what to do. <laughs> so I'm sitting right seat because I'm getting dangerously close to my CFI check ride, <laughs> and I'm nowhere near ready. So fortunately, Christy here just went through her CFI check ride back in December, which is uh, what, four months ago. Yeah, so I'm giving some unofficial guidance. Unofficial guidance right. because as a CFI, a newly minted CFI who's not two years dual or two years and 200 hours dual, she cannot sign off on another CFI uh, candidate. But I can absolutely give you some mentorship, and I can yep. be a ballast in the left seat for you. So she is ballast today. Christy Wong, ballast. That's All right. right. All right. Attitude indicator check. Okay. My attitude's good. How's yours? I have a great attitude. I'm about to go <laughs> fly. So. Hopefully my uh, DP will have a sense of humor, but I don't know. <laughs> yoke full aft. Yoke is full aft. All right. Do you do yoke full aft on yours? Do not. Yeah, so Only when I'm, you know, on a soft field. The, uh, the Centurion POH is yoke full aft, which is going to be an interesting thing because what do you do to about uh, taxing with winds? Well, so I use wind correction accordingly. I will use wind yeah. correction accordingly. However, um, I don't do the fall away and, you know, when it's behind you and that kind of stuff, unless it's really, really bad. You climb into and dive away from. Right. So I don't do that unless, I don't dive away from, because, um, unless it's super strong. Okay. Because, um, now, what do you consider says, super strong, though? Uh, anything that's, like, gusting um, close to 20 or above. And the reason why is that the Centurion is really front heavy. You don't, you, as much as possible, keep the weight off that front landing gear. Okay, so it's a good thing we have Matt back then to help ah. with our CG. Exactly. I was about to say it myself, but that's you, well, very I, true. So Matt is ballast as well, is what you're saying. Yeah, Matt we got a lot of ballast. That's our aft ballast. I like to ballast some aft. Oh my gosh. <laughs> going to make this show unairable. <laughs> hey, can you even see over the dash, Christy? I... You remind me of an old lady driving to church in her Buick. Did you race the seat? I tried. Remember, it was... Oh, you had to get out It was too tight. <laughs> I wasn't really listening at that point. Okay, fair enough. Nobody coming, we're clear. Right, there you go. Nobody on final, I have So you're not going to take off, so the, the, the DP won't take off. Correct, he's going to okay. sit there and he's going to watch you talk through the takeoff. All right, so I'm rolling on, I'm checking like two or three times, especially because I fly out of Hicks. And we also know we had a Nordo guy here earlier today. Yeah. So we're going to roll, and I'm not going to power up yet. I'm putting the strobes on now, just to let everybody oh, know thank we're... You. All right, I'm going to go ahead and power up. Is this, consider this display threshold. Okay. This is actually runway, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, we're crossing. All right, throttle okay. full. Okay, so throttle is going full. We're at 42, airspeed's alive. We're just now reaching the runway. I remember we're, we're, we're hot. We're at 36.5, which heavy. is ideal. So we're going to wait until we get to 71. There is 71, so rotate. And no gear horn. We're going to make sure we get to VX. Now, that's reversed in the indicator. So the first V is actually VX. So gear's coming up. No more runways left. And we got a positive rate of climb. Now, I'm still a little slow speed-wise, so I'm going to nose down. Nose down for VY? Yep, VX. It's reversed oh, gotcha, on okay. So there's, well, for us, we, we know that that should be VY, though. So now that it's there, and also I'm having to push a little hard, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of trouble. That ballast okay, there's, you. there's VY. Okay, now with VY made, climb a little bit more. I'm only 53 seconds into the takeoff. At five mi I got five minutes at the maximum power by the book. Now I won't go there. I'm gonna look right, there's a bird. But, uh, 
I'm being at my right turn, it's clear right. We're still right at VY. That's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin to cut back. And I'm going to go to 30 on my manifold pressure for the climb. And let's go ahead and be coordinated. All right, so still coming back. So Chrissy, when you're not flying, do you get really nervous and anxious? To go fly? No, or, no, no, oh, no, you mean no, like right now? Yeah. Oh, definitely, I'm type yeah, A. Yeah, I, I see you. Is I'm it, like, you're, not, you're not doing very well keeping your hand still or? I'm, I'm trying. Is it, to go back to that control issue? It's just my type A personality, so I'm gonna look out. And, oh, look, it's lovely terrain. Out here. Oh, it's so country. You okay back there, Matt? Oh, huh? you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Because I can do some lazy eights. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got a highway right yeah. here. It gives me some a good visual for ground maneuvers, good, good point. ground references. Yeah, we can just do some up and over this highway. Yeah. About that. I'm good. I'm just got my eyes closed, man. Good. I'm a little tired. Good. Relax. Rest. Yeah, this is I-10. All right, so Christy, uh, you know, you've made a big change. You uh, left your day job to be to do aviation full time. Good. And uh, I know that what you've always wanted to do was be like, you know, work in the office doing uh, management of uh, air air routes and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? No. Um, but, uh, you know, we did a show on In the Hangar early on where you talked to a bunch of different professional pilots. Because at that point, you knew you were heading this way, but you didn't know yet if you were going to do 91, 135, or even go to 121. 113, 30, contact, so I'm sorry, now you've you moved to 91, 135. 28, 65, Southwest 13, 30, What are your thoughts? Are you going to be doing 121, or...? What's what's the future look like for Pilot Christie? I'm honestly still figuring that out a little bit. Um, so what I learned after getting my commercial uh, certificate is that there aren't many places that you're able to get hired at if you have fewer than 500 hours. And so my first plan of action was to get to 500. Now, if you have fewer than 500, you can get hired at like you know places like. Um, aerial survey companies. There, there's a few little places out there, but they receive so many applications from people. Uh, are you looking for traffic? Yeah. yeah. I'm right there, too. That's the one. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's very, uh, very hard to get hired with those super low time ones. I mean, we're talking sub, you know, 500 hours. And so once I got right up to the 500, you know, I was right about 500 hours. That's when I got the job I've got now. If I decided to go part 121, I'd have to wait until 1,500 hours. Yankee, change my frequency, 134.2. Um, I'm on 34.2, Yankee. Roger, thank you. Okay. Got was 35. I started to move, like, uh, uh, 125.7. I would have done the exact same thing, so. Um, but yeah, so I, if I want to go 121, I have to have, you know, 1,500 hours to meet the uh, ATP minimums. And so, you know, that's that's still something that is available to me in the future, just not right now. I'm getting about uh, 50 hours uh, or so per month. Um, so you're averaging 50 hours a month. So if you've still got to go this is center, evening, uh, 700, so that's 14 months. months. Yeah. So you're Public still over a year yeah. at that rate. The great thing about where I'm at right now in my career is that it's a great time to be in aviation, and there are so many options kind of ahead of me in my future. Yeah. So There are. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how different it was. You know, I wanted to fly. I told you back in 2000, I've, I mean, I've always wanted to fly, but I actually got somewhat serious about it in 2007, and I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. 2007? 2007. Oh, I thought it was three or four oh, years ago. Oh, no, 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 yeah. So that's the story is I wanted to fly in 2007, but I only took a few flights and I was like, I can't afford this. Right. I mean, the return on investment was not great so at all. Hotel Houston. Were you already married to Steve? Not to, uh, no, 2007 I had, uh, in fact, I met him because I wanted to fly. Uh, yeah, so it was 
uh, it was one of those things where the return on investment wasn't good. I just, there was no way I could have done it at that time, you know. Um, but Steve and I started dating and then, you know, we moved in and then we got married. I mean, I started graduate school, we got married and had Mitchell and so on and so forth. But uh, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't until, I mean, there's an expanded version of the story that I didn't tell you previously. So, you know, when Steve left aviation, Good. You know, it was like we left aviation because I, I felt that connection through aviation through him. Right. I, I always thought I would get my, you know, my pilot certificate. And uh, it was just a matter of timing and affordability. Without getting any details, yeah, don't say anything you don't want to say, but... I mean, Steve got a little burned out, didn't he? No. Um, well. Or just financially? Like, or what? I, I, why did Steve leave aviation? He was laid off. So I heading at oh. Zero would be a vector for your climb. And so what, so that was eight, 2008 or nine or so? No, that was in 2011. 2011, so, so he yeah. got laid off. November 18, was it that different eight, eight years ago? Eight, oh yeah, six, five, it was way day. different. So uh, oh, a glut of pilots. Okay. In, in November of 2011, I had just found out I was pregnant with Mitchell. Literally, I think I, I had found out like two weeks previously, I had found out I was pregnant. And then he gets laid off. And he got laid off. He got laid off the week of Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. They paid him a severance and uh, everything through the end of the year. Which isn't long. Correct. Six weeks. And he made the decision at that time that he, was, he did, wasn't going to fly because we were pregnant with Mitchell. And I'd had a few miscarriages prior to getting pregnant with Mitchell, and so when we found out that this pregnancy was actually viable, it was going to stay. He decided at that point, um, he was like, okay, well, I'm going to stay on the ground and get a real job. Right. And uh, he actually applied at some places, I think, like flight safety and semi-flight, you know, a few of the other places, and right. uh, as to become an instructor, but nobody was hiring. Which is so funny now. I it mean, is, yeah. No, it's it's actually really funny now. I mean, no, like they they had, you know, the stack of resumes and you know not enough or you know, all the spots were already filled. So that's when he made the decision to go into HR technology uh, consulting. He had a friend uh, that worked at, you know, a business and they did HR technology consulting Allegiance and they they took a, to a chance on Steve by hiring him and he outperformed and blew everybody away with his, you know, awesome work ethic and yeah. he was able to rise up through that company and anyway, he, uh, so, I mean, he left aviation, like left it, left it. And I remember asking him so many times, you know, do you miss it? Do you miss it? Do you miss aviation? And I remember he'd always tell me no. He'd always tell me no. He always tell me no. He's like, no, I like being home with you guys. No. no. Was it because he felt if he were to say yes, then it was somehow betraying you guys? Um, I think he genuinely meant it because he real. I mean, it was a huge, uh, it was a huge switch for us though, because I was, you know, used to being that single mom, you know, Monday through Thursday, and, uh, you know, I was in school, you know, I was in grad school and everything too, so, I mean, like, everything just changed in 2011, 2012, because, uh, you know, I started working my job in health, you know, in medicine, I was, uh, you know, doing that, and, uh, I mean, it was literally just this huge dynamic shift with us, and so, uh, and then we had Mitchell, which that introduced another dynamic to our, you know, our lives. And so, I mean, just everything just changed. So dramatically for you guys. So dramatically, yeah. But, I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a very strong, you know, couple. So we, we got through it all. And so, it, in 2014, I met my friend Heather. It's, so this kind of like, this, she, I call her the catalyst. Um, okay. To the enzymatic reaction. I know, that's my like scientist in me coming out. Right. Um, so, in, you know, an enzymatic reaction, it's going to happen. It's, it's an, you know, it's kind of an all or nothing. Once you reach a point, it's going to happen. But a catalyst, of course, it catalyzes that reaction. So she was the catalyst to me becoming a pilot. Um, she was on maternity leave, and she was uh, selling some stuff on Facebook. She lives uh, in the next neighborhood over from me. And I, uh, I uh, you know, had reached out to her on Facebook saying, yes, I'll buy, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I went over to her house to pick it up. And so her and I were talking, seven and, golf, seven golf, six, three, and uh, five, I said, five, hey, five, 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 uh, I, uh, you know, oh, so five, tell me about yourself, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm just, you know me, I'm, I'm super introverted, right? Right, such an introvert. <laughs> right, so uh, I'm just chatting with her, and she's like, 
Oh, Golf Victory. I work for Spirit, and I was like, oh, are you a flight attendant? Because, you know, I'm uh, kind of a jerk. Oh, you sexist. I am definitely a sexist jerk. Uh, at least in that moment I was. We joke about it now, of course, but I was like, check. yeah, so uh, are you a flight attendant? She goes, no, I'm a pilot. And I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> that's relevant to my interests. And I haven't left her alone since. So we're like best friends now. She's, uh, I, I mean, I would just pick her. I was like, okay, so what do you do? This and that. And so she would, you know, she's a captain and she would explain to me, you know, she, she's only a year older than me and uh, she went, you know, to school for this and everything. And so, um, Five, Charlie I mean, she she got her private pilot in high school and went, you know, to a professional pilot school, and then nine. I mean, halfway through college, nine eleven hit, <laughs> and so she really. I mean, unfortunately for her, uh, she uh, got into the uh, into the profession at a really terrible time when it was, you know, right right before the uh, economic downturn. And so she's told me stories of furlough and every all the things that she had to do. I mean, she had to flight instruct for several thousand hours. I mean. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was, it was sketchy there for a while. I mean, when she got furloughed, she had to go, you know, pick up odd jobs. And, you know, she did what she had to do. And she's finally at a place where, you know, she's made it. She's a captain now and she's very, you know, well-respected. And uh, I mean, she's doing great. She's What's got a name? great quality of life. Her name is Heather. Heather, okay. So, uh, no, she's amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, on a personal note too, I mean, her and I just really click. She's three, three like hooks, funny and awesome. Right and she's got two uh, boys so that are about the same are, ages, uh, but you know, Mitchell know, falls right in between her two sons. So we have like, you know, kid play dates and we talk about flying. And uh, so, you know, in 2014, uh, when I met her, it was like, okay. So then I would talk to her. So then I was talking to her more and more. And uh, I remember, you know, 2015, 2016, it was like, March I should just do it. I should just do it. But I was so, I was legitimately concerned about how Steve would react to it, about how he would feel. You know, he, he left aviation, and I mean, I wasn't even a pilot, and I missed it, you know, and I was, you know, missed the aviation connection and stuff. And so I remember 2017, uh, or uh, 2016, I really, like, it, it was just one of those, like, I, it wouldn't let go of me. Like, I can't say that I wouldn't let go of it. It wouldn't let go of me. I remember one time we went to go eat. We were having lunch with some friends. And I'm on my phone underneath the table looking up flight schools. Like, seriously. That's, that's how serious it was. And I remember asking Steve that year, so, uh, do you miss flying? Do you ever miss it? Do you miss aviation? And he was like, well... I don't, you know, I, I miss getting in an airplane and going somewhere, but I don't miss the lifestyle. And I went, ah, that's the hook, right? Like, you know, because uh, now he's admitted that he actually misses flying. Uh -huh. He doesn't miss the lifestyle of being this, like, full-time, you know, pilot, being gone all the time away from, you know, his family and everything. But he misses flying. He misses going somewhere. So that's kind of when I, I set my own plan of action. And then I started, like, nerding out, too. I'd watch, like, flight training videos on YouTube and stuff because that's what I did to, you know, get my... That was my fix. I mean, literally, it was a, it was an addiction, and I was trying to find any way to get my fix. And so it was that, that day, that, you know, a crisp, cool October evening when we were, you know, sitting in bed together, just kind of winding down from the day, getting ready to go to bed for the evening. And you know, I'm, I'm terrible to shop for because I don't like things. You know, if you look at the five love languages, gifts is literally zero on my gift point. Gift is zero. Don't buy me anything. If I want something, I'm not a material person anyway. I mean, you've seen my shoes. Uh, <laughs> if I want something, I'll save up the money and I'll buy it, right? And so, uh, you know, he would, we were sitting there in bed and he's like, so Christmas is coming up. You know, what do you want to do? Because every year we had done something like, you know, like we... We had done, you know, we'd get little things, but then we'd do something as a family. We'd go to Medieval Times. That was a Christmas gift one year. We'd, you know, take trips. You know, we went to uh, Colonial Williamsburg one year. And so he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. And uh, I was like, well, it's almost like asking somebody to marry you, I guess. That's how I could equate it. Because I was like, well, um, actually, <laughs> I think I want to learn how to fly. And... I was waiting for his response. I mean, I had this whole argument in my head that I had concocted over uh, over several weeks and months. Like, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. But baby, please, you know. And how you'd have to convince him? If you love me, you'll let me fly. Right. 
So, and I never, I never had to use that argument because his reaction was immediately, okay, center, well, let's see how we can make that happen. Four, Lima, Papa. And I'll four, never four, forget seven. that moment because I was like, oh my God, four, well, Lima, but wait, really? like, you did That moment you realized, right. I'm going to be a pilot. Right, like, well, it was kind of like, well, wait, you didn't let me argue my point. <laughs> like, no, 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 I have so much to say. But I mean, seriously, though, he was, he was so on board with it. So I remember more of that conversation, it actually gets funnier. Because uh, he told me, you know, that night during our conversation, he was like, all right, well, are you serious about this? You know, whatever, like, Steve. And I kind of explained to him, like, this is, you know, you know, that, like, this is why we met. Like, I've always wanted to do this. And so he was like, all right, I tell you what, he's like, you can go fly for the airlines. I'll stay home with the kids. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and now, Mr., you know, I'll stay home with the kids and you can go fly for the airlines. He actually is getting submitting applications to the airlines now. Oh, he is. He is, yeah. It's I was wondering, that was one of my questions I was going to ask is, you know, he's been out of it, but lately... Oh, uh, we'll get to him. He's uh, <laughs> okay, all right. We'll save that. Uh, oh, let, yeah. Let me load all the cameras with another two-hour card. No, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he was like, all right. So, I mean, to my surprise, I, you know, it's funny because looking back now, I'm not surprised. But at the time, in the moment, I was very surprised because, I, you know, he had been out of it for so long. He had given no indication of getting it back into it whatsoever. And here he was just, I mean, he was doing research online with me. Like, hey, look, I, he's the one that actually found uh, Tamara Griffith. And he found, okay. you know, uh, Fox Aviation. He found GIFT, the GIFT Academy. Right. I had just missed GIFT Week that they do every year in October. Uh, I had just missed it. So they weren't doing another one probably for another year. So, uh, he, you know, we started looking at flight schools and stuff. And uh, so what we just, he's like, well, you know, what you probably want to do is you want to go and... Uh, you want to uh, go to the local pilot shops and like you know, look around. So we actually, we went to the Addison pilot shop, but they were closed the day we went. So we went to the Tina's pilot shop at Northwest Regional and that's where we met Alyssa, who manages the pilot shop there. And uh, you know, she was uh, like, oh yeah, and, oh yeah, I think there's a flying club here. And so she gave us the information to the Arrow Valley Flying Club. And so Steve reached out to the, uh, the uh, president at the time, Mr. David Bitts, um, you know, he's a great guy. He was so open about the situation. Um, you know, Steve just approached him and was like, hey, so here's the deal. You know, I'm, I'm an ex-CFI. I'm looking to get reinstated. Um, I want to uh, join the club, and I want to see about, you know, teaching my wife how to fly. And uh, David was so, you know, he, he was so great about it. He was so open to the, you know, situation. And, yeah, you know, he's like, all right, tell you what. He's like, if you get your CFI back, you know, we could really use you as an or two, if you could do that, then your wife can join and, you know, she can absolutely, you know, uh, you can teach her how to fly as a club, you know, you'll be a club instructor on the club insurance. And so she was like, all right. So while I, you know, I bought, went ahead and bought the materials to start studying all the ground stuff uh, and, you know, prepare for the written exam while well, he went up and did a checkout in the club's 172, uh, Phoebe. And uh, that's what her name is. And uh, so he did, uh, you know, and then he would, you know, he literally, he and I went up, he went did the checkout, and then that day, uh, November 10th of 2016, we went to Hicks. And we went to Beacon Cat. He flew from the left seat. I didn't touch anything. It was just, all right, we're flying over. Look, there's the speedway. And, you know, uh, we went and had a $100 hamburger. And then we flew back. And it was literally the best date ever. And, <laughs> I mean, it was. That was your discovery flight? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, because you'd already done a couple of years, oh, yeah. in, you know, and when he was, years before. Yeah, when he was still, a, you know, a professional pilot back in the day, we had gone up a couple that's of times. That's how you met him, yeah. Well, no, actually, that's not how I met him. I met him online. <laughs> oh, no, really? Yeah. You didn't say that. You said you met, met him through the aviation No, stuff. I met him because I wanted to learn how to fly. Do oh. you, would you like to hear that? Oh, okay, so not online like, you know, No, I met him online. Like on a dating site? No. That's what, I, that's what it sounds like. I met him online. He was a stalker. and no, I, met, I was in a chat room. And I was the stalker. I met him on MySpace. Oh, oh my God. I swear to God. MySpace, what's that? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So you met him in MySpace. So, okay, so that story. So I was. T I had taken a couple of flying lessons, and I was... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Before we get into that story, yes. you guys need to, need to quit talking so much. <laughs> We're talking enough for both no, of them, I, I guess. They're, like, not even paying attention anymore. Dude, I was going to say, like, I uh, We still got an hour, so, yeah. All right, so you met Steve. Yeah. So Honest. how I met Steve, uh, I was looking for people to talk to. The guy I was taking flying lessons with said, there's a flight school on the field as well. He, here's his card, and on this card was the website. So I went to the guy's website, and it said, for more pictures of the airplane, 
you know, check out my MySpace page. So I checked out the MySpace page, and then, you know, MySpace had those, like, top 10 friends. And so I literally just started clicking on people on the top 10 that looked like pilots. I, uh, it, uh, so I would click on somebody's profile, and then I had this, like, very generic uh, message that I was copying and pasting. And it was just, like, something huh. along the lines of, hi, my name is Christy, I'm a, you know, look, I'm, a student pilot, uh, you know, wanting to learn how to fly, looking for people to connect with, right? And that was it, looking right. for hearing from you. Well, ever since then, I have kept a picture of Steve's profile picture oh, on my phone. It's always been one of the first pictures on my phone. Oh, that's awesome. That was his profile his picture. His MySpace profile picture. His MySpace profile picture. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There he is. <laughs> Definitely looks like a pilot, right? Yeah, he is so pilot. Dude, right. he is very, wow, so pilot. So, yeah, so I, um... Should have had five stripes there. Yes, they were right, exactly. So, um, you know, he was one of the, like, four people that wrote me back. And, uh, I mean, he was just so cool and there super friendly and very, like, I mean, you know, you've met Steve. He's, like, the nicest guy in the world. And that's really what attracted me to him. Um, you know, in, in a dating manner, like at first I was like, okay, you're a pilot, you're cool, let's talk. Then we became friends. Uh, two, four, five, one, and what's your aircraft type? We became friends, and, uh, and I mean, we just, like, he made me laugh, and he made me smile, and, you know. Thank you, Bernadette. And then we, it just went from there, just kind of blossomed. Then he asked me out, uh, like, you know, he asked me if I wanted to do it, meet with him, and he had, he, I was visiting California, he was visiting California, and, uh, we just met up, and then we he asked me if I wanted to come to Texas and you know, spend a few days out here. And I was like, and, uh, sure, why not? Oh, you were in California? I was in Las Vegas, where oh. I went to college. Oh, you went to NL. Uh, Alicia, who rides with me a lot, uh, went to school in Las Vegas. Oh, UNLV? Yep. Oh, oh biology. 859, yeah. So, in the sciences. Awesome. I should, like, hit her, we should talk about the yeah. rebels. You met, yeah, you met Alicia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I like Alicia. I think I friended her on Facebook. Yeah, you, well, you need to tell her you went to NL, UNLV. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, so that's the Steve and me story, and the rest is kind of history from there. But, uh, yeah, getting back to the how I got into flying, so, I mean, uh, Steve needed to, he had to redo his check ride. He had to uh, do a CFI reinstatement check ride, which is basically like doing your CFI initial all over again. Right. But when you do that, if you pass, then they reinstate everything. All your multi, your, everything. Everything. Yeah. Double I, everything. So, uh, he had to do that. It was a pretty tough check ride for him, um, and uh, he had to study. He had to go up. So that's when he started. He would take me. He actually threw me in the left seat, you know, a few times, and uh, he would go up and you know practice maneuvers and stuff with me sitting in the left seat. I was not okay with that. Uh, Why? Because I, I mean, I was scared at the time. Oh. You know, it was like, oh, you're doing all these steep turns, and of course, I'm a Type A control freak, and so that wasn't you know very pleasant either. Plus the fear and anxiety stuff. See. So but you hugged the bear. I hugged the bear. So, uh, so yeah, uh, he went, he did his check ride. He passed his check ride. He got everything reinstated, got his temporary airman certificate, took the next day off to go fishing. And then that uh, very next day, uh, I logged my first flight hour, like actually like, you know, flying. So he let me do the takeoff and everything. And I'd seen him do it enough times. I think we did a short field takeoff out of Northwest Regional. Oh, that's awesome. That was my first takeoff. And uh, we flew you mean, over Arrow, you mean Arrow Valley? Northwest Arrow Valley. Uh, we uh, flew over to uh, Bridgeport, had lunch, and flew back. And that was my first flying lesson where he let me fly. He did the landings, he, you know, and he just kind of had me follow along and stuff. But What's there to eat in Bridgeport? You get the crew car, and then you go into town. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and there's actually several good places there. But I didn't know about the Red Barn, Sulphur Springs. Oh, man. That place is awesome. Yeah. Cash only, but it's awesome. Good yeah. food. Good food. Good prices. Yeah, John Wingfield was the one who clued me into that one. Yeah. John's a good guy, too. Thanks, and uh, thanks to the guys back there who can't hear us and talk way too much. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.